Hello, my name is Jordan Dotzel, and today I will be talking about overwrite quantization, opportunistic outlier handling for neural network accelerators. This work is in collaboration with Richie Zhao and Chris Desa and my advisor, Jiru Zhang. And specifically, it uh, complements previous works that we've done on post-training quantization and builds off of our last year work on outlier channel splitting, which I also presented at TechCon. To start, I want to motivate it by talking about the outlier trade-off with linear quantizers. This is a histogram of activations taken from an arbitrary layer of ResNet18. And these activations, of course, are before ReLU because they're both negative and positive. And the uh, jagged line here represents the histogram of floating point values before quantization. And then the, the spiked lines here are the quantization points after quantization. And to, to start, uh, the clip thresholds are the maximum and minimum representative values in the original floating point space. And we define outliers as values that are clipped based off of these clipping thresholds. And these clip thresholds here characterize the trade-off between the outliers and the majority of the values. So for example, if this clip threshold was increased and uh, at the same time this clip threshold was increased, you would get a better representation on the majority of outliers, but then you would trade off because these lines would spread apart and you'd get a worse representation on the majority of these values here. And since it's a centralized distribution, uh, there are many more values in the center uh, close to zero. And uh, just to point out that these are activation values, so they are determined only at runtime. So to address this trade-off um, and to account for it, we introduce overwrite quantization over Q. And this is uh, a standard activation volume from any uh, convolutional layer. We run over Q over the channel dimension. And in this case, X2 is an outlier and X3 is relatively small. So this could be a zero or some small non-zero value. And X2 overwrites X3 if X2 is relatively large compared to X3. And by overwriting X3, X2 takes on uh, the bit width that was previously allocated to X3. And OverQ uh, removes the outlier trade-off for these values that it is performed on. And this enables lower clip thresholds um, because you could push to lower clip thresholds without actually incurring the extra error that you normally would on the outliers. Now I will discuss OverQ within a dot product. So this is a baseline dot product. This is the core operation for both linear and convolutional layers and a bunch of other linear operators. And um, it is a simple pairwise multiply and accumulate process. First, the activations come in from the previous layer and these activations are accumulated in a higher bit width. They are then passed to the current layer where they have to be truncated down to fit within the, the, the bit width constraints of the multiplier. And then they're multiplied together and accumulated. With the overQ version of the dot product, this uh, the previous layer still accumulates in a higher bit width, but now we could handle that higher bit width by overwriting values that are small relative to the outliers. So in this case, this value is an outlier, and since there is a zero in this slot here, uh, it is small enough to be overwritten. So this one is taken down, and um, when these are multiplied together, then this requires a left shift operation before accumulation. And then we also store a column of bits to represent which of these values are being overwritten. And we call this the over Q bit. Now to generalize that even further, uh, these dot products could be considered to be calculated within a systolic array. And specifically, this is a weight stationary systolic array. And so the activations come in from the left, from the input channels. They come in where the weight is, they are multiplied by the weight, and then um, they are summed downward in the channels for the upper channels, and then they're rescaled and the bias is added. So to include overwrite quantization on top of this, we do overwriting across the channel dimension. So the input channels here, so that means that we do overwrite across the columns. <clears throat> 
or down the columns. So in order to accomplish this, we just have to be able to share the adjacent weight um, from the neighboring processing element. And then a mux is required because we either used our own weight or we used the one from uh, the neighboring processing element. And then we need the shifter because if we do do an overwrite, we then need to shift that to, uh, to align the MSBs properly. And then the overcue flag pulses along with uh, the uh, activation itself. And this process is opportunistic in that we don't know beforehand whether or not these outliers are going to exist. And it depends on the distribution of the outliers and the, the rest of the activations within the input channels. So moving on, so to describe these distributions, there is a, we define a notion of coverage and this is the percentage of outliers handled by overcue. So this figure here shows that um, this is the mean activation on the y-axis and the different channel indices on the x-axis. So you could see that across the channels, um, it varies pretty widely on the mean activation scores. So for in order for over two to work, you have to have adjacent values that are large and relatively small. So to accomplish this, we could reorder these channels by profiling on a few batches of the training data set. And uh, we could do this statically and based off of the mean activation value or some other metric. And this increases the coverage, the percentage of outliers handled by overQ, uh, in some cases, in some layers, by up to a double digit percentage. I performed a few simple experiments on overQ. And here you could see it's on ResNet 50 and the accuracy is on the y-axis with the clip threshold, the activation clip threshold on the x-axis. And I compare overQ method against a uh, optimal method where all the outliers are overwritten in the network, even if the zero or small value does not exist, uh, that it does not exist adjacent to that outlier. And I scale down this optimal method to different grid points um, representing a, a fairly um, broad range of uh, baselines for overq to be compared against. And 0% here is just standard quantization with no overq. And you can see that overq is effective at small clip thresholds um, because at small clip thresholds, there are many outliers to be dealt with. And the optimal accuracy increases with lower clip thresholds. So the optimal here is the black line. And as you go to the left, as you decrease the clipping threshold, the accuracy increases. And this has to do with the fact that the trade-off no longer exists between the outliers and the majority of values. So as you decrease the clip threshold, um, you only get a better representation on the majority of the values. And overQ here in green is somewhere between 0% and 25% of the outliers covered. And um, this could be improved with a, a few different methods. So one of these methods I call k-connected overq. This is conceptually a very simple extension of overq to increase the outlier coverage. Um, other methods are possible that won't have the same amount of hardware overhead, but this is a, a good starting point since it should be more effective than any other method, uh, any other reasonable method. So just to review, uh, in the standard systolic array that is augmented with overq, each processing element could share its weight with the adjacent processing element. When you increase k, this just becomes a, a more dense connection so that the first processing element here shares its weight with the second and the third and so on through the rest of the, the systolic array. And the advantage here is that you increase the outlier coverage and this shows a, a simple example of uh, when that would occur. So in the standard case, so k equals one, uh, only this outlier would be able to be represented and it would just overwrite. Uh, so the, the second activation would overwrite the third activation here. But when k equals two, uh, the first activation could overwrite the third activation and the second activation could overwrite the fourth activation. So you could see how this would give you a higher outlier coverage. But uh, this offers a, a trade-off between the coverage and the hardware complexity. So in the previous slide where I showed the hardware unit for a processing element using overq, 
uh, that MUX will be larger since you have to have denser connections and more weight sharing um, between the processing elements. And the actual over qubit will also have to be more complex since it has to choose uh, amongst more options. And then moving on to the experiments with K-Connected, this graph is going to look fairly similar to the previous one. And I brought in the same baseline score and the optimal score just to give some reference. So as you increase K, uh, the accuracy also increases across thresholds. And this is most apparent, again, in the lower thresholds where there are a majority of outliers. And the K-Connected over Q is still bounded by the baseline and the optimal threshold. And then just to summarize some of these uh, experiments, and these are only preliminary at this point, so these are some results on ResNet 18 and ResNet 50. Uh, the floating point values are listed in this column. The baseline here is a baseline quantization with 8-bit weights and 4-bit activations. And over Q is evaluated at different Ks here. This final column is just a small uh, improvement to over Q where we use some of the, the small values in the network that weren't handled by the traditional over Q method. And this is described in our corresponding paper. And from these results, you could see that at least on the ResNets, and we expect this to generalize with other models as well, uh, the accuracy increases up to two to 3%. And there is a consistent accuracy improvement with increasing K. So if you just follow from the baseline to increasing K and then also using this, uh, this small addition, you will see that uh, the increases override any noise between the data. And on top of this, additional optimizations are possible that we will explore in the future. So thank you. And in particular, I wanted to thank Richie Zhao for many of the figures in this presentation and the core idea of this project, and Shuqi Wang for help with the code and for running some experiments and uh, SRC for supporting this work. I believe at this point I should be around for questions. Thank you.